on the banks of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, in the historical land of Mesopotamia, a cradle of civilization, OPEC was born. It happened on September 14, 1960 in Al Sharp Hall in Baghdad, with no fanfare and no glare from the international media. OPEC's development over the past six decades has not been a straight line, but with 60 years of institutional wisdom and a brilliant history, it is a mature, dependable and essential partner in energy governance. Today, OPEC holds meetings of the conference with its ministers, as well as ministerial OPEC and non-OPEC meetings at least twice a year to vigilantly follow market changes and make educated and cooperative decisions in support of market stability. Additionally, it holds regular technical meetings and dialogues with an increasing number of partners. From the initial five founder members, today, OPEC has grown to include 13 sovereign nations on three continents. Together, these countries hold 80% of the world's proven oil reserves and provide around 40% of global crude oil production. The impulse for OPEC came in response to the activities and practices of the Seven Sisters. These were large international oil companies dominated by the established industrial powers. Chevron, Exxon, Mobil, Texaco, Gulf, British Petroleum and Royal Dutch Shell. Oil producing countries relied on them for oil revenues and wanted to exercise their inalienable right to permanent sovereignty over their natural resources in the interest of their national growth and development. The formation of OPEC was, in this sense, a pioneering act. The real spark came after the powerful international oil companies decided to reduce the posted price for a barrel of oil without asking the host governments. This led to a very quiet meeting on the sidelines of the first Arab Petroleum Congress at the Mahdi Yacht Club in Cairo in April 1959 with representatives of OPEC's five founding members, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. Here, a gentleman's agreement, the precursor to OPEC, was endorsed. Few could predict the powerful impact this meeting would have on the future of the oil industry and indeed the world. Juan Pablo Perez Alfonso of Venezuela, Abdullah Al Tareki of Saudi Arabia, Dr. Talat Ashebani of Iraq, Dr. Fouad Rahani of Iran, and Ahmed Sayed Omar of Kuwait joined together over a year later on a fateful September day in 1960 and created OPEC. For its first five years, OPEC was headquartered in Geneva. But in 1965, it moved to elegant, historic Vienna. The original host agreement was signed by Ashraf Lutfi, then OPEC Secretary General, and Dr. Bruno Kreisky, the Austrian Foreign Minister at the time. OPEC has called the city home ever since. The organization's international status was cemented when it registered with the UN Secretariat as an intergovernmental organization in November 1962. Membership doubled in size over its first decade, with Qatar, Indonesia, Libya, Abu Dhabi, later the UAE, and Algeria joining. The organization was busy setting its house in order. A permanent secretariat was established. The OPEC statute was finalized and the Economic Commission Board developed. The 1960s were a time of startling advances in the world, and these were based primarily on crude oil. I want to show you something. Yes, right around there. This is the stuff we're drilling for, crude oil. Well, finding it isn't easy. Sometimes we drill deeper than four miles and still come up empty-handed. Isn't 
Isn't the oil in Big Lakes underground? <laughs> I wish it were. National oil companies were born and became increasingly important. OPEC rose to prominence in the 1970s. The new decade marked a turning point in the history of the oil industry, with repercussions well beyond the energy sector. Landmark agreements were signed, which defined a fundamental realignment of the oil industry, resulting in a new international order. By the middle of the decade, member countries had taken into their hands all the effective levers of power in the production of crude oil. OPEC was on the map. In 1974, the International Energy Agency was established to guard against major disruptions in oil supply with the development of strategic stocks. Meanwhile, Nigeria, Gabon and Ecuador expanded the membership of the organization. This full quota of 13 member countries would remain in place for two decades. The organization broadened its mandate with the first summit of heads of state and government in Algiers in 1975. This led to the adoption of a solemn declaration embodying many of the goals and objectives from the first decade and a half of the organization's existence. It also addressed the plight of poorer nations, calling for a new era of cooperation in international relations in the interests of world economic development and stability. To this end, it founded the current OPEC Fund for International Development in 1976. Meanwhile, the headquarters gained a more permanent home at the Obera Donnerstrasse in Vienna in 1977, where it would stay for the next 32 years. For our member countries, the use of the word difficult to describe the present decade could be viewed as an understatement. The 1980s witnessed the destruction of many of our cherished dreams that an orderly international oil market is fundamental to a stable world economy and that such stability can only be achieved and sustained through cooperation among all the leading oil producers and consumers. The 1980s brought new market players, which led to an increased need for cooperation to achieve market stability. OPEC and non-OPEC dialogue witnessed an historic breakthrough. An institutional change came in the form of objective frameworks for oil pricing in the early 80s, which increased transparency. This included the OPEC reference basket. Meanwhile, in 1983, the first oil future on the New York Mercantile Exchange was established, creating a historical turnaround for the sector. The flourishing spot market became the real market for oil. Former OPEC Secretary General and icon of the oil industry, Francisco Parra, described the 1980s as pivotal years for the development of market prices that you could see, hear, touch and feel. Environmental issues emerged on the international energy agenda during this decade. The movement would continue to gain in size and significance. Climate issues became ever more important, with the Rio Earth Summit in 1992 leading to an agreement on the Climate Change Convention which would in turn lead to the Kyoto Protocol and later the Paris Agreement. OPEC no longer looked on inward challenges like sovereign rights, as it had in the 1960s and 1970s, or managing the backlash of the 1980s. The organization focused on the collective challenges that faced the global oil industry. There was a heavy emphasis throughout on the interdependence of producers and consumers and the need to match security of supply with security of demand. 
Only in this way could there be sustained harmony, stability, and equity in the market to benefit all participants. This conciliatory mood prepared the ground for great leaps forward in producer-consumer dialogue over the decade. Meanwhile, oil's growing role as a financial asset led to more hands on the wheel of the industry, with speculation increasing oil price instability. With the change of the millennium, key words would become volatility and speculation. During this decade, an innovative price band mechanism worked well in the early years but was not suited to a market which faced unprecedented volatility due to non-fundamental factors. The second and third summits of heads of state were held in Caracas in 2000 and Riyadh in 2007. The headquarters moved to Helfersdorfer Strasse in Vienna's first district in 2009, where it stays to this day. OPEC celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2010. Having proudly survived a half century of change and adaptation to become a notable player on the world stage. I think advancing in, in, in age is, is not a very good thing, but when you grow up in such an organization, I think you become more valuable, more resolute, and I think that's the situation with OPEC. As the beginning of the next decade rolled around, the global economy was still struggling with economic recession and heightened risk in the international financial system. The market was relatively stable between 2011 and mid-2014. However, in 2014, a combination of speculation and oversupply caused a slump. This led to a severe historical downturn between 2014 and 2016. The world's focus on multilateral environmental matters and sustainable development began to strongly sharpen, coalescing with the signing of the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda, including the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. Oil aims to be part of the solution to the energy transition and world energy security with technology playing an essential role in ensuring low-carbon use of this vital commodity. Oil will continue to help the world meet the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly focusing on energy poverty, with the environment remaining a top priority. OPEC has shown itself to be a leader and will continue to play a major role in energy governance working with multilateral partners to tackle the world's challenges today and tomorrow. OPEC confirmed support of its principal objectives through its associated solemn declarations under the following three themes. Stability of global energy markets. Energy for sustainable development. And energy and environment. In response, a new era in OPEC and non-OPEC cooperation came about with the signing of the Declaration of Cooperation in December 2016 by 24 OPEC and non-OPEC oil producing countries. The Declaration of Cooperation and its signatories transformed the oil market, bringing down a massive overhang in OECD commercial stock levels which thus supported world economic growth. The latest milestone in this unique collaboration was reached in July 2019 with the signing of the Charter of Cooperation, which provides a long-term framework for the partnership. The emergence of a pandemic in early 2020 emphasized the need for the Declaration of Cooperation. Extreme destruction of up to a third of total oil demand followed worldwide lockdown efforts, which severely restricted the movement of people and closed down businesses. 
OPEC and its partners once again came through with an unprecedented production adjustment, both in amount and in length. In addition, the shock led other large, previously uninvolved producers and world leaders to join in the conversation, offering support for the work of OPEC. Today, there are 13 member countries in OPEC. Algeria, Angola, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, the Islamic Republic of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Venezuela. Since 2016, they work regularly together with their non-OPEC counterparts in the Declaration of Cooperation to address market stability and increasingly technical and other issues. OPEC has shown itself to be a leader and will continue to play a major role in energy governance, working with multilateral partners to tackle the world's challenges today and tomorrow. The organization has played a large role in the creation of a new world and modern society over the past 60 years by ensuring the supply of petroleum. We believe the best years are yet to come. For the future of our planet and development for all, OPEC will be there as an important instrument of change.